video about Bloomberg and, and Tulsi Gabbard uh, on, uh, on on Sunday, right before uh, Super Tuesday, and then I got into Houston and I was working on the video and getting it up and everything. And, and basically, once that once I started getting up the video, there were all of these reports that Pete Buttigieg had dropped out of the race. Interesting. Early votes have been cast, but Super Tuesday had not arrived. Buttigieg was kind of being groomed to be the top of the top of the tier, and I was I was kind of fucking weird and interesting. I thought he was being groomed to be the the best of the best. I thought he was groomed to be the the golden boy of the of the DNC. Then the day after that, maybe Klobuchar drops out. Then they both endorse Joe Biden. Right before Super Tuesday. Right before fucking Super Tuesday. Two candidates that realistically were doing better than Joe Biden. I don't like either of them, by the way. Uh, I think people that regularly watch my videos and listen to my podcast should know that I do not like Mayo Pete, Pete Guaido, uh, or Amy Klobuchar, who put an innocent black kid in prison and has uh, absolutely no person. Her big thing is, well, I'm here. Oh, neat. <laughs> That's your big... I think Bill Maher was like, I'm really looking at uh, Amy Klobuchar. At the beginning of the race, he was like, I think Amy Klobuchar, that's the, that's the ticket right there. You know, a nice uh, white wine mom. You know, she doesn't say anything. She's not going to do anything to my money. She's not really going to help you guys out there. She's just going to let things run the way they're going to run and uh, kind of let capitalism uh, eat itself alive. And that's what we need. This is centrism. This is logical centrism. It's the it's the uh, the the Ouroboros of centrism, and that's what we need in our society. It's my Bill Maher impression for you guys there. So they dropped out. Very interesting. So, uh, they endorsed Biden. Of course they did. Which, uh, I, I, like, what had happened, I was like, oh, all right, so it took a day. Pete Guaido didn't really fucking say anything on Sunday night when he dropped out of who he was endorsing. Uh, but, uh, you know... He wound up endorsing uh, Joey B, uh, brain dead Biden. Uh, unfortunately, Biden's brain is dying, and uh, it's dying right in front of our eyes. Um, so at, at the endorsement, <laughs> Biden Biden claimed Mayor Pete reminded him of his son, Bo Biden. Uh, and he said he has all of this in- intellectual capacity. Yeah, uh, if, if by intellectual... Uh, you mean that he is a blank slate so that the State Department and the Deep State can tell him exactly what to believe and exactly what to recite, and that's exactly what he does. Very, a lot of intellectual capacity there. Uh, he's a blank slate for the fucking CIA. He has a bunch of CIA, uh, former CIA directors, and former State Department reps, and former fucking U.S. Treasury ambassadors that are all like, this guy's great. He's going to fucking put sanctions on whoever the fuck we tell him to. He'll just do it. He'll just go, uh-huh, okay, that's the script, and that's the script we'll take. Which I think the CIA found refreshing and was very excited about jumping on board with because Trump doesn't do any of that shit. You don't have to like the guy, but let's be honest. Trump is not somebody that's, like, sticking to the script on anything. Now we have Klobuchar, right? Uh... Klobuchar, her statement that she made on stage when she was endorsing Joe Biden uh, is that we need to join hands instead of pointing fingers. Yeah, yeah, we, that's what we need to do. We need to join hands so that Amy can arrest and imprison you for absolutely no reason. And without any evidence, 
without any real trial, without any uh, uh, actual like criminal investigation for anything you did wrong. She's just gonna say you did something wrong, and we're gonna join hands and watch innocent people be put in prison. That's what we're gonna do because Amy Klobuchar is that. Now Biden, <laughs> Biden's response. He kind of laughed, uh, and, then, and then he goes, uh, Amy won all those debates. Yeah, Joe, uh, I'm pretty sure if she won all those debates, you would be endorsing Amy Klobuchar right now. Now, Biden also came out and, and said, uh, you can't run as an independent, uh, I'm paraphrasing here a little bit, he said, you can't run an independent democratic socialist in the states that we need to win, right? Uh, so he, he's talking about mostly the southern states uh, where, where his thought is like, uh, you know, these people are just not going to get it. They're not going to understand the idea of democratic socialism. Uh, and, it, and, you know, it, it really, to me, a statement like that, where somebody comes out and says, look, these southern states, they're just not going to understand. You can't come out with these beliefs and, uh, and, and and say, you know, democratic socialism and have these people join on board with your campaign. It's sort of a confession uh, to be like, look, we've been controlling the narrative for a very long time in these states. Uh, and we've been telling them what socialism is and it's evil and it's been demonized by us. So don't fucking come in here and try to like, wake these people up and try to show them how we've been manufacturing consent for uh, corruption and inequality and war and cr all this other shit. Don't, don't fucking come out and say that shit. And he kind of just called these people dumb. They're too stupid to understand what democratic socialism is. Okay? We've, we've indoctrinated them within the propaganda. Okay? Don't, don't come in here with, with your facts and your books your talks about equality and show them what history is all about. We are trying to write the history, Bernie Sanders. Okay? I, I as Joe Biden, will write the history as legislation compromise candidate. That's... I don't think Joe Biden just kind of called uh, Middle America and Southern America dumb. He's like, they're not going to get it. They can't understand these ideas. Okay? You just... You get out there and you make a couple of, you, you say a couple of buzzwords, freedom, guns, Biden babies, and then you kind of, you know, you, you do a little, you do a little dance, you say the word malarkey a couple times, and they're like, yeah, those are words we know, and boom, diggity, boom, we got yourself some voters. Fucking shit, Joe, give them a little bit of credit, huh? I feel like they're. I feel like <laughs> the country is shifting and it's changing, and it's changing because more people are getting educated. They're getting more. Uh, they're, they're 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 getting a, a better understanding of what capitalism is as a system, and it's a system that hasn't fucking helped us out. Making statements like this is just a. Is, is proof that, this, that the status quo... I mean, it's a very subtle thing in the way that the status quo is coming out and saying that they've been controlling the narrative and shit. Here's, here's the other big one. Beto O'Rourke, who has been... Uh, <laughs> get it? I feel bad. I kind of. Not really. A little feel bad for Beto O'Rourke because he tries so hard to be relevant, and it's just like Beto, buddy, have a seat. You know, Beto O'Rourke is the example, uh, is is the shining example of when people say like, oh, you know, you're radical and revolutionary in your teens and your twenties. You know, reading the Chomskys and the Marx and listening to the punk rocks and the Ramones and the Sexy Pistols. Okay, but when you turn 30, you're going to realize what you need is some good, hard centrism crushing you from the top down, making sure your soul will never shine again. 
Beto O'Rourke is the example of that. O'Rourke came out and said that he would fucking vote for Joe Biden. That's what he said, right? In Texas. And, and I think he is mildly popular enough with the skater boys uh, and uh, and like the the faux punks or the old the older punks that aren't punks anymore, you know the punks that got ties. Uh, then they'll kind of be like, yeah, okay. I mean, you know, who cares? My soul doesn't matter. I'll I'll keep crushing my soul. I'll keep grinding it in. You know, I'll, my my soul's already in the meat grinder of of, of corporate control. God, I'm literally passing a place called Orborg Petroleum right now. But that's... Here's the amazing thing that happened with that, though. Uh, and I think I think uh, major music fans and progressive rock fans are probably going to laugh at this more than just uh, people that aren't into, into music. Uh, the lead singer of the, of the Mars Volta at the drive-in, Cedric... Bixler Zavala came out and said that he denounces Beto O'Rourke as his former bandmate. Denounces. Boom. Harsh language. Slam. Uh, apparently, uh, uh, Cedric Bixler Zavala, Mars Volta, and Beto O'Rourke, uh, aka Robert O'Rourke, uh, were in a band called Foss. We're in, like, this punky band called Foss together. Uh, and, uh, you know, Cedric came out and was like, oh, I'm disappointed that uh, it Beto kind of sucks that he's doing this, you know, and I'm, I'm bummed out about his his endorsement of, of, uh, of Joe Biden. And uh, <laughs> and they asked him, like, so, so what do you think, I mean, like, what are you going to do about your about your bandmate and he's like yeah I'm done I, I don't really consider him a bandmate anymore uh, <laughs> then he goes he's denounced from the comatorium <laughs> pun bam oh man I normally get mad whenever fucking like musicians are funny because I'm like, look, I have to develop a personality and I have to work really hard to, to be funny and get people to like me and shit. And you're just, you're up there with a guitar, you know, playing the music with your beautiful hair and your fucking sexy body and everybody else is like, you know, everybody's like, we'd fuck you, it doesn't matter. We'd have, we'd, you know, and like in order to just get people to like me, I have to have all of these other things and talents and stuff. And when they're funny, it's like, no, the funny is my thing. I, I work really hard on this. But that's fucking great. Denounced at the comatorium. Mars Volta fans are, are fucking giggling like crazy about that. Uh, in their debut album... By the way, if you haven't checked out Mars Volta, uh, go check them out. They're fucking phenomenal. Really good band. Um, and in their first album, their... Uh, uh, the, the lead song, I think it's the second track, is called The Loused in the Comatorium. And it's, it's a very popular song in there, so Denounced in the Comatorium. Explaining it now, I, I'm sure it's not funnier than what it was. But dude, you endorsed fucking Joe Biden, and your old bandmate was like, yeah, we're Dunza. I know, fucking... Public Enemy broke up over Bernie Sanders. I know that. Dumb. But, you know, I mean, come on. Flavor Flav has had this coming for a long time. Let's be honest. Are we really, are we really uh, surprised that the guy that wears clocks very seriously is a as jewelry, uh, doesn't want to support Bernie Sanders. <laughs> here's, here's the thing with these endorsements. If, if, if we may veer away from the musical, uh, uh, musical slams of, of some of these candidates here. Here's, here's the thing with these, uh, with these endorsements. Uh, why did they drop out? Right? And then now you have Bloomberg that dropped out and endorsed Joe Biden as well. Um, why did they drop out? What's the play? 
right? Because in some of these states, um, not a lot. I think I think there was like maybe three or four states Super Tuesday that um, Pete Buttigieg did better than uh, Elizabeth Warren and uh, and got a good amount of fucking early. I think they. I think. Mayo Pete and Klobuchar might have gotten a decent little little boost in the early votes, um, and it, and a lot of it really depended on okay how how can we take the votes away from Bernie? Well, let's have these two candidates drop out and put their chips into uh, into Joey B instead of um, you know brain dead Biden uh, to to, uh, to to help him out to put a put a put a centrist and a moderate. Up, up on the up on the the scoreboard here. I mean, Joe Biden won one fucking state. He didn't even come close in Iowa, and New Hampshire. He he he, he kind of came in second in Nevada, but Nevada was such a fucking blowout for for Sanders uh, that you know Chris Matthews is retired. <laughs> uh, So, why did they do it? Now, the only reasonable thing I can think of is cabinet positions and VP positions. Uh, I, I hope this isn't the way that this will play out. I really hope that it's not. This is, this is the 100% absolute worst case scenario. Um, Biden Bloomberg. Here's the thing. I think, uh, you know, Biden, I don't know how much he's going to be able to sustain a run. I think people really want to support that guy and and kind of supporting him out of, I don't know, fear of socialism, which I don't think people really understand. And I have a ton of videos talking about what socialism actually is and how it's portrayed in the media, Uh, what democratic socialism is, how, how democratizing workplaces would work out. A ton of videos about this shit. So, you know, Biden Bloomberg would give Biden pretty much just a bunch of money. Because Bloomberg funded his own campaign and I think Bloomberg can then just fund Biden's campaign, right? You know, Bloomberg came out and was just like, I think he's a great guy with a bunch of really great policies or whatever the fuck he, he had to say about it. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's the absolute 100% worst case scenario, Biden Bloomberg. Uh, now, Pete Guaido, Mayo Pete, Mayo Pete might, I mean, that's, if it's a Biden Buttigieg ticket, you know, fine. State Department still gets what it wants. The CIA still gets what it wants with uh, with this ticket because uh, Pete would still do whatever the fuck they wanted him to do. He's still a blank slate. Um, and uh, you know, my friend Mark Viola pointed this out: is Dick Cheney changed the game on what the VP could do? He, you know, the Dick Cheney is sort of the architect behind the Bush administration. So. Uh, Biden could end up becoming a, a perfect pawn, perfect patsy. And then you have Brandon Biden, who, whose brain is legitimately dying in front of our eyes. Um, you know, uh, Joe Biden, the dementia candidate for 2020, uh, wouldn't know what the fuck is going on. He doesn't know what the fuck is going on now. You know, so um, we got that going. That's a possibility. I don't know if a Biden Klobuchar ticket is is really a viable possibility. Uh, a lot of people were upset that Klobuchar didn't uh, endorse Elizabeth Warren, but they never really like got along. Like Elizabeth Warren would say stuff about Amy Klobuchar and shit like that, but you know, uh, Amy Klobuchar was just like, get the fuck away from me. Uh, I think. You know, and again, like I feel like Amy Klobuchar is not really a, a, a genuine human being on, on that debate stage. I think Amy Klobuchar is a fucking psychopath. 
so is Mayo Pete. When Mayo Pete is confronted about imperialism and his lack of a foreign policy and his lack of a health care for plan and lack of just anything really, like a personality, he kind of gets really pissed off and just, you know, either grips the side of the fucking podium or, or he like ignores the, the, the questions that people ask him uh, because he's a motherfucking psychopath. Uh, and that's what motherfucking psychopaths do. Is they go, Rrr! okay, get him out of here. Get him out of here. Get him out of here, right? They like ignore all that shit. So, I don't think, ba- I don't think Beto O'Rourke is also going to get a VP candidacy out of it. What I do think Beto O'Rourke will get, maybe, is, a de- is Department of Energy. Uh, or, or something that'll kind of head, head up, something related to gun control policies, because he's been very on the gun control policy thing since uh, everything that happened in El Paso and the shootings in Dayton and everything. Uh, that that kind of became his flagship uh, flagship thing that he was going to talk about uh, at every every debate and every chance that he was in in public life. Mayo Pete would also be good for. Uh, Secretary of State under a neoliberal fucking imperialist government. That's something we should probably keep an eye on. Is if, if he's Secretary of State uh, or, or uh, a foreign policy advisor, um, you know, that's a possibility here. These endorsements are um, uh, not surprising, uh, but should be. We should be looking into them carefully. We should understand who Pete Guaido is. We should understand who Amy Klobuchar is. We should understand who Beto O'Rourke and Mike Bloomberg are as well. Now, my, myself, you know, uh, people like Pete Camp, Kim Iverson, uh, Jimmy Dore, Ron McCone, Graham Elwood, uh, Anya Parmpil, Aaron Maté, I'm, I'm rattling off names of people that I think everybody should pay attention to. Every one of us has talked about all of these candidates in depth, in, in terms of imperialism, in terms of corporatism, in terms of the oligarchy, in terms of what they actually need for the American people and for the fucking plutocracy that goddamn runs this country. How do they levy up uh, against standing by the people? And how do they levy up standing for corporatism? Uh, none of them look fucking good, but when you only watch CNN, which I think a lot of this country does, unfortunately, and if you only pay attention to identity politics, which, in my opinion, identity politics is 100% going to be the fucking death of the Democratic Party. It definitely will. Voting just for an identity, just so, de- you're just so desperate for representation, that you're like, I will fucking die the a gay neoliberal that'll destroy the lives of poor people. Oh, we'll take it. Just let there be somebody gay. Like, it's not helping anything. It will be the destruction of the Democratic Party if that's how we, that that's how people fucking vote. You can't vote on identity. Vote on what these people believe. Vote on who, vote on what they stand for. Don't vote on, on, on uh, you know, the color of their skin or what's between their legs. But that's how the Democratic Party wants to vote. That's why you have all these people. And that's why when, when you don't pay anything uh, and attention to anything other than this stuff, you know, you kind of miss the mark. You, you, you don't see that Pete Guaido is a CIA plant. You don't see that Joe Biden is a, 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 a corrupt, massive racist that isn't really a unity candidate. You don't see that Amy Klobuchar is another corrupt, racist candidate. Uh, that uh, is kind of a fucking psychopath that maybe possibly has a god complex. You don't see that Mike Bloomberg is a, is a horrific, ra- uh, uh, is basically Donald Trump with a D by his name. You don't see that Beto O'Rourke can't do kickflips anymore. Hey everybody, uh, thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Uh, if you are a, a uh, first time viewer, uh, of these videos, first time viewer of these, uh, or a listener of these videos, 
please subscribe. Please make sure that you are subscribed and come back to check out other videos. I talk about uh, a variety of political, philosophical, and sociological topics uh, 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 quite often on this channel. Sometimes we also get pretty nerdy on this channel. I gotta talk about some nerdy comic booky anime type shit. I'm into that as well. So if you're into that sort of stuff and this is your first time that you're catching this video, hit that subscribe button. Make sure that you are liked and subscribed to this page uh, to get all of the updates when I put, uh, put out more videos. And if you are a returning user, welcome back. Thank you so much for, for, for being a returning viewer. Uh, of these videos. Uh, if you enjoy the type of material that we are talking about in these videos, then there is a very good chance uh, that you will enjoy my live stand-up comedy show. I'm a live stand-up comedian as well as uh, a, a guy that yells in my car. Uh, I've got live stand-up comedy tour dates coming up uh, in uh, St. Louis, Missouri, Des Moines, Iowa. Uh, Moline, Illinois, in the Quad Cities area, Chicago, Illinois, Indianapolis, Indiana. I'm going to be recording my live stand-up comedy album March 20th in Washington, D.C., March 21st in Williamsport, Pennsylvania, and April 2nd through the 4th at the Pittsburgh Fringe Festival. Uh, I'm also opening for my good friend Lee Camp uh, with special guest Eleanor Goldfield on some of these shows. Uh, Lee is doing a book release tour, and if you purchase VIP tickets of his stand-up comedy shows, you get a free copy of his book and uh, a free souvenir of his latest comedy special as well. Uh, Lee in, uh, is going to be coming to Flagstaff, Arizona, Tucson, Arizona, Asheville, North Carolina, two shows in Asheville, North Carolina. Uh, Greensboro, North Carolina, Atlanta, Georgia, Burlington, Vermont, Montreal, Quebec, Canada, Ottawa, Ontario, and so many more dates. You can check out my entire touring schedule, including one I'm going to be opening up for Lee Camp uh, at ramanoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N, noodlescomedy.com. Uh, grab those tickets. Come hang out with me. Come. Let's get weird. Let's get esoteric. Let's talk about some deep shit. Um, if you want to become a sustaining member to help improve the quality and quantity of these videos and uh, the writings that I would do regularly on my website, uh, there are various different ways that you can become a sustaining member and contribute financially. Uh, first and foremost is Patreon at patreon.com slash Moment. Ha ha! Uh, you can check out the rewards and the tiers and the goals that you would help support. Another way is by donating directly on my website at ramennoodlescomedy.com. R A M A N noodlescomedy.com. You see these big orange buttons, uh, and there are various different levels that you can contribute, various different levels that will get you various different little uh, prizes and stuff like that. Uh, that you can direct, directly donate onto my website if you don't want to go through a third party thing. And the last and final way is uh, by becoming a sustaining member on my Bandcamp page at ramanoodlescomedy.bandcamp.com. That's R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.bandcamp.com. Uh, you can become a sustaining member uh, and you get uh, unreleased uh, comedy and storytelling content that aren't released on any other live comedy albums or uh, on YouTube or any, any of that sort of stuff. It's exclusive collections for the people that become sustaining members. Also, if you listen to my podcast on Anchor.fm, if you listen to the audio version of my podcast, you can listen to it on Anchor.fm and become a sustaining member directly there. So you would you, you be directly um, helping out the podcast uh, through, through that as well. So if you don't want to go through these third-party channels and you want to go direct, that's one of the ways to do that as well. Um, thank you guys for watching this video. Thank you guys for uh, getting all the way to the end, hearing me ramble about some shit at the very end of it. I very, very much appreciate it. I hope to see you guys at a live show. I hope you guys share this video around, show it to some people that you think would really enjoy it, or to, to some of your enemies to enlighten them a little bit more. Uh, but uh, till the next video, see you on the road.